Okay, and we're on to another step of the T51 Mustang build. Now we already installed the Aspen unit up front and it's time to install the rest of the system. Aside from the uh, nav radio data that we get from our IFD 550, the rest of the data for the Aspen unit comes from this RSM and that's the remote sensing module. This has our, our uh, GPS antenna, has our magnetometer, as well as the outside air temperature and um, it's just an all-in-one unit. They actually provide, Aspen provides, this cable, one cable that houses all of those data lines um, that goes from the front of the aircraft to the back of the aircraft, and just with a quick disconnect, um, we can attach it. So what I ended up doing is created this bracket that will attach the RSM to the outside of the horizontal stabilizer. And the reason for that is, um, as you remember, the T-51 Mustang structure comes from this steel uh, structure that's enclosed by the aluminum uh, skins. And the problem with steel is that it will interfere with the uh, magnetic field. So we went around the aircraft with this compass and um, just to see the kind of interference that we were getting and we were really surprised when you go close to that steel structure around the aircraft um, uh, close to cables and some other devices um, you actually do see a pretty heavy 10 degree difference in this compass and so we went around the aircraft figured out the best place to put it was at the outside of this horizontal stabilizer because the only steel part is one small steel pin that holds our elevator in we really couldn't find any interference from that part and it seemed to be the best location to put it outside and away from the rest of the structure. So we're gonna mount this in, attach the quick disconnect cable, and put the fiberglass fairing on the outside. Now the one concern that I did have with putting it inside the fairing was that um, our temperature reading wouldn't be um, uh, as accurate as if you were putting it outside the aircraft. And what we found is um, there's actually a lot of space for air to go in. There seems to be a lot of air circulation. If we really need, we can put um, a little inlet hole to allow more air through while we're flying but um, so far it seems like this is going to be a perfect option get us the most reliable data that we can into our aspen Okay, as you can see, the fiberglass fairing is on. Um, I believe we're gonna end up screwing this on so we can get to the um, RSM in the future. And um, it seems like a really great aerodynamic design. Um, there's a lot of room for air to come in and out in for our outside air temperature, and it's away from the steel structure. Okay, so we just finished the audio panel and it was actually a breeze, which I don't think many avionics shops can say because we have all, the only things that we really had to um, solder are our four jacks that are in the rear um, passenger seat. And we also had to solder on the push to talk buttons. Everything else was already made and it's all going into our approach fast stack system. So um, that is pretty much all set and done. Now we're moving on to the next two um, devices and that is our Lynx transponder as well as our Avidyne 550. So the Lynx transponder is this bottom tray right here and I've actually gotten that almost complete. The only things I'm missing um, are our marker beacon as well as our GPS and transponder antennas. So um, that is pretty much it. As you can see, this black box is actually our Wi-Fi transmitter, and that's gonna allow us to get all of our ADS-B data, all of our traffic data and weather data onto our iPads, and it's, uh, uh, it's gonna be really easy. We can just um, uh, connect to it and get all the information onto our iPads. The power and the grounds are in, and now it's time to move on to our Avidyne. So 
There are three main plugs that you can see. One's already connected, one's just in place, and we have this other plug as well. Um, and those, because of our push fast stack system, are already made, all pinned out, and all we need to do is attach the back planes to the tray. The one thing that we do have that we're gonna be utilizing is um, there's actually a fourth port that we can use, and that's for our options. And um, there's really two main things that we're gonna be using our options for. We have a, um, uh, a front camera that we're gonna be mounting on the bottom front of the aircraft. And because our aircraft is pitched up so much, um, having a backup camera pointing forwards um, is just gonna give us a little extra uh, safety factor while we're taxiing. And um, the other option is for our uh, fuel indication or our fuel information coming from the JPI, and that's gonna show um, how much um, or how far we can go with the, with the fuel capacity that we have, and it's gonna be able to show that in our Avidyne 550. So other than that, we have um, our comm and nav um, lines going to the antennas, as well as the GPS that we're gonna tie in to the GPS line from our transponder. So that's gonna, what I'm gonna work on next. It shouldn't be too much because again, the Approach Fast X system, everything is already all pinned out. So with that, stay tuned for future videos. Every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, we have Social Flight Live, and we have, uh, we've had hundreds of great guests and we can't wait to have more, as well as um, the Social Flight mobile app and free socialflight.com website, which shows hundreds of thousands of events and places to go. So may stay tuned for future episodes. And everyone, blue skies.